Hey everybody, this is Sherry with Butternut Hollow Crafts, hashtag old lady with tools. I'm just bringing um, my Facebook page up on my phone here so that I can see Facebook comments because sometimes on here, for some reason, they don't want to uh, bring them up. And there I am. So, <clears throat> we are going to again, guess what? We're going to do a pumpkin because I like pumpkins. So, First of all, these are, I'll let me turn you down so you can see what I'm talking about. That would help, right? Okay. These are two pumpkins that I made. And as you can see, one is, sits this way, and one is a tall one. And these are really easy pumpkins to make, you guys. You just cut a square piece. I cut a piece out of a, you know, one inch pine, three quarter inch pine. And it's just a three and three, uh, three and a half inch square. Hey, Joni, my beautiful sister. And so this is just a three and a half inch square. And then I just cut two pieces, one for each end. And then these strips, strips are old uh, lath out of a house, uh, you know, an old house that had lath and plaster. Um, I use them because they're thicker, but you can use like the lap bundles we get at Menards, Home Depot or whatever. Hey, Jess. Hey, Doris. And so and these are like nine and a half inches long. And as you can see, I cut uh, two, four, six, eight of them. And you just lay them on your squares like this. And I attach them with my air nailer. And you just do two on the top, two on each side, and then two on the bottom. And this makes a pumpkin. And then to make the tall pumpkin, all I really did is stand it on its end. Took the vertical pumpkin that was like this and stood it on the end like this. And then the stem is, um, hey, Maya. Hey, Barbara. Hey, Dale. And so uh, for the stem, I just cut a piece that was four inches long from the same lap and then just uh, angled the top. And so that's how you make these laugh pumpkins. And so now to juice these up, although they would, they're cute like this, don't get me wrong, but to juice these up, I am going to, we're going to decoupage them. And so what I did, <clears throat> cute, oh, thanks, Barbara. It's sunny and hot in Colorado today. Well, I hope you guys get rain. We're not getting much rain. We could use it too, dear. We had a hot spell last week. It's finally cooled off. I mean, it's like in the mid 80s. That's a lot better than, you know, almost 100. So we'll take it. But so to uh, juice these up, I just lightly sanded them because I wanted to keep some of the texture of the lath because I think that's cool. And so, and I just really just like painted a real quick coat of um, white paint on there. Because what I want to do now is... I know we normally do white to decoupage, but I'm going to try something different tonight. And so we are going to do just a quick coat of some orange. And this is an orange I mixed up. I like this orange because it's not like the bright pumpkin orange. Um, and so we're going to just, if I can get it open, we are. We're going to just cut uh, this dry brush, basically a real quick coat on these pumpkins because I don't want the orange full coverage either and you'll see what uh what my method is here in a minute the method to my madness because hopefully it will all make sense when we get it done I hope you like it Dale you know lives probably are not the thing to try you know to experiment but you know what this way we all learn together right and so I'm just roughly quickly However, I'm going to put a real quick coat of orange over this white. And depending how long this takes, I don't know if we'll get to both pumpkins. But if we don't get to the tall pumpkin, I will show you what I'm going to do with it. And I will be for sure um, post pictures when it's done. But these pumpkins are quick and easy and very simple to make. So if you have some three quarter inch lumber, and like I said, go get a bundle of laughs. You can get a bundle of those laughs from Menards, Home Depot, whatever 
kind of store you have like that around you, they're, they used to be fairly cheap. I'll say that used to be because any more lumber is around here has gotten ridiculously high. But maybe where you're at, oops, I forgot a spot, didn't I? But maybe in your area, the laths won't be bad. Let me grab my brush back out of that water because <clears throat> I forgot to do this part. We'll just do this real quick. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys, if I have a frog in my throat. I swear I have allergies. I swear I do. And I never used to. So we're just going to do that. There we go. Now we're done with the orange. And we're just going to dry that real quick and then we'll do, uh, we'll decoupage this. And you'll see what I'm up to. And I'm going to start on these sides. So that's what I'm going to worry about the most. This paint dries fairly quick. So here is the side of this pumpkin. Let me get it back in camera for you guys. I see I have a little wet spot right there and I do want this dry. Okay. That looks pretty good. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to take my water base medium. I use a DIY liquid patina. You use whatever you're comfortable with. And what we're going to do on here, you guys, I know it's going to sound crazy, but you just have to stick with me. Well, hi, Bonnie from Louisiana. This is one of Royce's new papers that it's Carmen's Color Swatch. And I know it's not a typical paper you would choose for this pumpkin, but for some reason I have it in my head that I had to try it on this pumpkin. And then we'll, um, well, hi, Rita. And then we'll, you know, you'll see what, what I'm going to do. So first, and I got to stand up again because I'm short. I want to see where I want this, where I want these squares, which row of squares, I should say, that I want to hit on this pumpkin. And I'm trying to decide if I want these color or these color. I think I want these colors. So we're going to go like this. And I'm going to decoupage this sheet down first. And then I'll split where the lap is at. I'll just do a wet cutting and split that. Or you know what? Maybe I'll split it first. Maybe, maybe, maybe that will make my life easier. So let's just... Let's just tear this right here. Have any of you guys ever used um, those water pens that they talk about? Oh, hi, Donna. Thanks for watching. Have you guys ever used those water pens that they talk about for tearing paper? I just ordered a set. I'm hoping I like it. I think I'm going to do it like this. That will really help on this end down here, this edge. So let's get this decoupage down, this row anyway, or strip or whatever you want to say. And these laths, again, have this texture on there that I really like. And I almost said yummy. But if you guys have been following Royce, that's the drinking game. And if you are playing a drinking game, let me know. I'll be more than happy to say yummy as many times as you need me to. <laughs> but you see how you can already see some of that orange. I hope the camera's picking that up coming through on this paper. That just looks so cool. And the texture of this laugh. I love it, love it, love it. Okay. And because I like the way that straight edge worked... We are going to tear a straight edge on this paper because I like the way that laid down on the lath very much. So and that did not tear 
quite like I wanted to, guys, but that's all right. Because we can kind of trim off the rough, and this will work all right. I'm just afraid it's going to be really hard to get in between those lasts with the sander. And if I would have been thinking about this, I would have had this done before the live, you guys. But that's okay. This will work. By the time we decoupage those edges down, it will be fine. So there... And we'll lay this on there. Kind of lot lining up with that row above, but although it's not absolutely a rule breaker if you don't. I think a wet brush works just as well. Okay, thank you, Rita. I, I was going to try it, but I'm, I'm so used to using the brush. I don't know. Bonnie, I have... Well, my comments keep popping up on my screen. I have one that I use and it works pretty well. Convenient for sure. Oh, you don't have to keep dipping. Yep, I can see where that would I could see where that would help. Okay. So there's that. And then we're gonna do let's do this other side real quick. Let me just straighten this edge up a little bit. I have found that straight edge on there. These last um, work good. And then I did it. Yeah, I did it right over there. I was like, did I do it wrong? No, I did not do it wrong. So we kind of want that like that, don't we? But this is not straight, you guys. Let's just straighten it out just a little bit here. Where am I at? Right there. As you can see, my scissors are well loved. There, that will work. And then I want to, I actually want to come down here and I think we're going to cut this right here and try and do it as straight as I can, but without a line to follow, no promises. I can't write on unlined paper, to be honest with you. Yeah. So that one works there. And I think if that one was straight, it would work, but it's not even close to being straight. So let's try and straighten these up just a little bit. Well, hello, Lauren. Kathy, how are you doing? Let me get this trimmed up a little bit. Having a straight edge does help. This still is not straight, you guys. I know. I have a little OCD. I'll admit it. I can't help it. There. That's going to go there. And so if this one goes here... I do want to wet tear some of this paper off. So let's go ahead and do that. And get it out of our way. Just tear off that excess. Whenever I can get excess paper out of my way, I do because it, it does help. This one still has a little, there's a little notch in it right there. It's driving me crazy. There. 
Alrighty, let's get this decoupage down. Gonna lay that there like this and I love how this paper is picking up that orange underneath and again that texture on the lath oh I put that on wrong didn't I I did I did I put it on upside down guys this paper is so forgiving as long as you you know don't let it set up too bad too fast See how I was able to pull that up and move it without tearing it? Yeah. That's one of the things I like about it. There. Now you can really see that texture on that lap. Okay. And then this one is going to go like this. See if I can put this one on right. Thank you, Kathy. This paper is... um from Royce's new release and it's called Carmen's color swatch. And, um, it's from a lovely gal, um, Carmen Dahmer. Um, if you don't follow her on Facebook or on the other social medias, she, her, a business is curiosity farms. That gal's got more talent in her little finger than anybody I've seen. I mean, unbelievable. And she actually made these color swaps using, um, watercolor. Yeah, it is so cool. So there's that. Now we will try and get these ends. And I did cut my squares to fit. But because I cut these wood, this wood, they're not exactly the same. I'm telling you, I am not an exact person. That's why I don't like to make furniture. I have made cabinets and, you know, not like kitchen cabinets, but other cabinets. I do not like to do that stuff because you have to be exact. And I am not exact. So, yeah. Well, hi, Luann. Hi, Teresa. No, I wanted it upside down because of the laugh, Teresa. I did have it on wrong. See, I wanted, Teresa, I wanted the straight edge toward the center so I didn't have to um, worry about trying to sand in there. That's what I was trying to do, or avoid, I should say. Yeah. Crap. I think I got the wrong end. Because I cut these exact, I have to make sure I use the right one or it's not going to work. Well, I don't think it matters. I think they're the same size. So we'll just, we'll just go with it. We'll fix whatever we got to fix. It's not going to be a huge deal. I just want to cover up those ugly or plain, I should say. They're not ugly. They're just plain orange. And we'll trim all these when we need to. And then this one goes here. Make sure it fits. I don't think it matters. It's not going to matter. The nice thing about these little color swaths, too, there may be a pattern to them, but you got to look really close. So if I lay them on there one way and the other one's another way, seriously, I do not think you're going to even notice. So, oh, we got to get this end down a little bit more. There we go. Okay. I don't like the way this paper's laying, you guys. There we go. Okay. So the ends we don't really have to worry about. 
I'm just going to lay this like this. This side's almost dry. We're going to hit it real quick with a hair dryer. And I will be doing the top too, but I really want to show you um, what we're going to do to the to the sides. How we're going to spruce this paper up a little more. Well, hello there, Front Room on 7th. I'm betting that Sherry because Dale already said hi to me. Glad you ladies could join me. Get some of this off of here. And for this, because it's a... Uh, it's a narrow, I'm just going to use this emery board and come down just to get this excess paper off. This emery board I have used a lot, as you can tell. So I'm probably due to grab a new one, but I get all the good out of them I can get, you guys. Yes, this paper, Sherry, I don't know. It is so cool. So many things you can do with it. I mean, I could see it being really cool in a mixed media pro, you know, project easily. It is so cool. So this is what it looks like just on a pumpkin. Don't I think that looks kind of cool myself? What do you guys think? Okay, Teresa, catch me on the replay. Thanks for joining me, honey. Yeah, I think that looks cool just like that. I do, I do. We'll go ahead and get this. Dried a little bit. Thank you, Jesse. I wasn't going to do this side, but once I seen that other side, I have to see this side because I'm thinking it looks really cute. And as you know, I like traditional pumpkins, but I like to make more untraditional pumpkins when I'm when I'm crafting. camera I'm sorry you guys you guys know how to sand decoupage paper anyway this is a little damp down here but it's it's working okay here so I'm be careful right there this is there so see now here's this side and down here I'll probably just use some uh, distress ink or something but on this side what I really want to do is I want to kind of grunge this up oh thank you Cindy thanks Rita so to grunge this up <clears throat> I'm going to take this uh, farmhouse antiquing glaze from Annie Sloan, um, or not Annie Sloan, and Amy Howard, Amy Howard, Amy Howard, let me get that right, and um, if you have an Amy Howard retailer, I would reach out to them, but I'm just going to pour some in this little cup where I was experimenting, and um, 
I buy my Amy Howard pro my Amy Howard products from my friend um Lexi Granger. If you follow her or know her, she sells the Amy Howard products. And so that's where I um buy mine. And um she's got me like hooked on several Amy Howard products, stuff like this. But you just need a little of this this is pigment powder from uh diy and so i'm going to add that into this antiquing gel and what that does it just allows my pigment makes my pigment powder into a soluble a soluble soluble you know what i'm trying to say product but yet it will still give me that antique look that i'm looking for and because I don't want to just brush this on, this is what it looks like now that it's all mixed up. It doesn't take very much. So I am going to take a natural sea sponge. And I know this looks grungy because I use it a lot. And I'm just going to dip it in a cup of water like that. And then I wring it out. I'm just wringing it out. I want all that excess water out of there. And I don't want this full coverage. I just really want the high points, want to grunge it up. So I'm going to take my sea sponge. It now looks like this because that water makes it swell up. And I like the natural sea sponges. And I'm just going to lightly dip it in the stuff that I mixed up. And I'm just going to dab. And you're just going to dab wherever you want, how much you want. And it just, you can still see the blocks of the paper, but I love the way it makes it look, I don't know, like that. So it makes it look kind of, brings back that, you know, that it's supposed to be a pumpkin. But yet, I now have this grunge. I was going to try and dry it so you can see where the glaze gives it a grunge look, but yet the pigment powders introduces a little more orange. But it's all kind of messy, and that's what I like. Just like that. What do you guys think? I just love that look. So we'll do the same thing over here. I'm going to take my sponge. And not load it too much. Just kind of randomly. Thanks, Cindy. Dab where you want it. And then we'll dry this. Thank you, Lauren. I think it looks kind of cool. And I love that it, it's just random. I like the randomness of it. These are still wet. And I will do the same thing <clears throat> um, to the top. And maybe I will get this top decoupaged here. And I will show you how I'm going to work around. Let me get in camera. How I'm going to work around this stem. This is kind of, okay, so we want it kind of like that. I got to figure out where I want that center at, and I just really want here. So I want this paper to hit like right about there. In this top, I'll probably have to sand that inside edge. Because I want to come around 
um, this stem. Hmm. Not unless I tried notching out around the stem. I wonder what would be the best way. Oh, thank you, Barbara. Glad you like it, Joni. Um, yeah. <laughs> Trying to decide, guys, which is going to be the easiest way. I think I want to notch around that stem. I think it'd be easier to do two separate papers and just notch on the outside. So let's tear this. Continue to come down. Oops, there we go. Okay. Let's make a straight edge again. As straight as I can, anyway. And we test it out. Whoops. I'm going to lay it across this edge. There we go. So now. I'm going to notch out for that stem. Like this. I'm going to. Make a cut there. And then we're just going to cut in a little bit, just kind of by eyeing it. Whoops. Get that flap out of my way here. And we need to go a little deeper. So yeah, this paper will stretch a little bit. So, you know, I think this is good. So let's get this decoupage down here. Make sure I get around that stem good. And then Lay that paper just like that. Come around just like that. That looks good. Then we're going to lay. There we go. Just like that. Hey, Carmen. You see I'm using your beautiful paper? See, Carmen, what I did? Everybody loves that paper, girl. I don't want that one. Okay. I want a straight edge on this one then. And this is random, kind of random blocks. So I'm just trying to follow the line of the paper, not the blocks. Like I said, I can't write on unlined paper. So that itself is a feat for me. Oh, Carmen, I didn't make this paper look good. You gave me a decent paper to, to make my projects look good. I saw a little bump on here. There we go. 
Okay, and again, I'm going to notch out for this stem. Let's see how I got to do it this way, though, you guys. I'm telling you. This is taxing my brain more than I ever wanted to, but I don't want to notch out this side. All right, hang on here, guys. We got to rethink this. I need to cut some of this paper off first. So I don't have so much to work with. And then it's going to go on there like that. But on the other side, that was right. I was right that one time, guys. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, I'm an overthinker. I make things way more complicated than they got to be. I'm telling you. Yep. So this is going to go on here like this. So for this, I got to notch out for that. So let's go here and here, just like that. And cut back a little bit. There we go. So it's going to go on there just like that. Okay. There we go. Like that. I can live with that. I'll hold you there. Okay. Put this paper down like that. Okay. And then we'll get this side done. There we go. So now the top is done. And now that you've seen everything that I did that you don't want to do, don't do it. <laughs> the paper, Rita, is on my site. It's called uh, Carmen's Color Swatches. It's under the Royce's Decoupage paper. I sell them on my site, which is holocrafts.com. <clears throat> That's where you get the paper from, Rita. And I have them here in the shop, too. My shop is stocked full. If you want to come look at them in person, come on out, honey. So that is dry. Dry enough. We're going to start on this side since it's the first side I did. And I'm going to, again, great. Then I get to visit with you. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the top that I did to the sides. And then I just want to add one more element in here before I 
um, call it good. So there's that. <clears throat> I'll take my little sponge again. And I'm re-wetting it just because I want to make sure it's good and plump. That's all I'm doing over here is re-wetting it. In this natural sea sponge, I should tell you, it come in a great big sponge. I just tear it up. Don't cut it. Tear the hunk, tear pieces off of it. If you cut it, you're going to always have that straight line. This way it stays much more um, natural. And that's one of the things I like about the natural sea sponges. Because then when you're dabbing or adding texture or um, dimension to your pieces, it's a much more natural look than having these straight lines. You get that more organic look. See? <clears throat> what time is it? Oh, I got about 20 minutes. Okay, so now what I would like to do, I want to give this a dry real quick, you guys. Just so I don't stick my hand in it and ruin it. I kind of want to add one more element to this pumpkin. So, um, let me get some of this paper just back there out of my way. But this paper by itself, I think, looked fine. I'm just trying to make it this look more like a pumpkin, I guess. So, um, but I love... I love this paper. I love what it, it's so versatile. I mean, seriously. But anyway, what I want to do is I have my texture stamps because I like my texture stamps. You know that. And this, let me get this on my, this stamp here. <clears throat> oh, hey, memory. So I'm going to take this texture stamp. And I'm going to use, this is the walnut. And here, this is what I want. I'm going to use the vintage photo because I don't want it to be stark, stark. And we are going to take and introduce just a little more texture randomly on this pumpkin. And so... Yes, Melanie, what I did is I took Amy Howard's antiquing gel, uh, antiquing glaze, Amy Howard's antiquing glaze, and I added some pigment uh, powder to it and made this. It's almost gone, but I um, dipped a natural sea sponge in it and then sponged that on there. Um, I think a dry brush over it would work just as good or would work. I just like the randomness of the sea sponge. So I'm just stamping this with this vintage photo. And it's so light, it's hard to tell. And now I'm going to lay it down on here. But I just want random. I don't want like a big line. So I'm just going to go like this. And it is so, so subtle. I'm not sure if I'm going to get another stamp out of it. I did not. So we'll just ink it up again and do it again. And it's just very subtle. Kind of like grunges it up a little bit and we'll do that bottom laugh and then i will show you i'll hold it up to the camera so you can see it but see how that 
distressed that vintage soda and that distressed stamp just kind of makes puts lines in my pumpkin basically kind of sort of and then um what do i want to do you know what we could go ahead and do that other side these ends i'm letting dry really good because i do have to trim my paper just a little bit and like i said last week I do not have good luck trimming wet paper. I will tear it every every time I'll tear it. So I usually let my paper dry really good before I try messing with it because I I don't want to rip it. Let's do that. Maybe come to here and do it like this. If I can get two stamps out of it. Nope, it's just too subtle. That's okay. We'll ink her up again. Doesn't really matter. Thank you, Carmen. I hope I'm doing your paper justice here. And we'll just turn this and go like this. And there is that. And then there's that side. And this is how the pumpkin is looking so far. I don't know. I think it's kind of cute, you guys. I actually think, too, guys, on the top here, I think that if I took, um, you could either stamp leaves on there from, like, that pumpkin, uh, the pumpkin stamp from IOD, or... Um, Royce has got um, some pumpkin papers, I think, or if you fussy cut out a leaf and put that on there. Well, hey, Colleen, um, you could decoupage a leaf on here, too. I think that would be really cool. There's just so many options going through my mind right now that I have to, um, I got to process it all and decide what exactly I want to do, you guys, to finish this up. But I know the one thing I want to do, I want to splatter and I want to spray this. I took a class with Lexi over the weekend. And we use this stuff. Maybe you guys have heard it. It's walnut ice crystals. And I'm absolutely in love with that stuff. Um, yes, I'm going to tie raffia around the top, Lexi. But I'm... I'm trying to figure out if I want some leaves. I do have some metal. You know what? I know what I'm going to do. I have some big metal pumpkin leaves. I think attaching them on here would be really cute. I don't have any up here, but I got them. So before I call it good, we'll be adding them with some raffia. I think that is exactly what I'm going to do. You know what, guys? I don't want to splatter this with white, though. I don't. I want to splatter this with not even orange either. <laughs> what color should I splatter with, guys? Maybe brown? Well, hello, Sarah Kasiki, my beautiful niece. Maybe brown? Maybe. Let's try some brown. Let's try a little brown. And if you guys have never taken a class with... Uh, Lexi Grenger, go to Lexi Grenger Art. Follow her on Facebook. You can see your classes. Seriously, guys, you will learn more than you ever knew you needed to learn. And you will fall in love with these. Oh, that's too much. Damn, damn, darn, darn. Sorry, sorry, sorry for my language. Um, and I didn't seal this, so it's probably not going to sponge off. But it might. We'll see. Yeah, that's not bad. I could probably live with that. But what I should have done is this. We're going to flip this over. I may have to redo that side. We're going to flip this over because this is what I really wanted to do. Is this walnut stain. Yes, Carmen, she is amazing. 
So go to her, find her classes. I did the three sticks and stencil class, you guys. It was so much fun. Learned a ton of stuff. She has one, I think, coming up this month in August. I don't know if she has any openings, but you'd have to go on her website. You can find out. Um, seriously, take it. If she has openings, take it. Yep, this is what I shall use instead of that brown. But see how that just antiques, gives it a little more antique look? Grunge look, whatever you want to call it. I'm in love with that stuff. It is amazing. So I'm going to dry this. And I'm probably not going to be able to get this stuff wiped off is what I'm going to guess. No. Nope. So what I'll end up doing is probably redecorpage in this side because I don't do that. Do that. Yes. And then I'll do a little raffia bowl on here. I'll finish putting my stamps on the ends after I can clean up this paper, you guys. And I will take I will take after pictures of the finished product. But what I wanted to show you real quick before I call it a day is on this big pumpkin, I am going to use um the burlap the floral burlap paper and i'm going to decoupage that on here but then i'm going to go over this you guys with venetian plaster that's been tinted and give it a raised design look on top of this just very subtle um and um, i will post a picture of that when i when i get it done if i don't get it done might be what we're going to do next week because I'm going to be out of town for the next, uh, I leave town um, tomorrow night and I won't be back till Sunday. So if I don't get this done, I can count it as my project for next week and then I don't have to be sweating about that. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you like the pumpkin, um, showed you what not to do, showed you what to do. Um, I think it looks, I think it is very cute. Love this paper. Um, love the products that I used. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Much love to you all and have a great night. Bye-bye.